YouTubers, this is Lady Fairy Dancer, and I wanted to do another video. I'm doing a couple of videos today because I need to do four in order to catch up because that's how behind I am on my 31 videos. So I need to try to record four today. And I'm not going to take my clothes off in front of you. Okay. So um, today I wanted to talk about the questions concerning the fact that my husband is Catholic and how we coexist with each other and how it works with our deities in our house and all that sort of thing. My husband is Catholic and he very, very much works with the Virgin Mary. And I know a lot of people don't consider saints as deities, but in his case, I very much do consider her, um, her a deity for him because I don't ever see him praying to a God. I don't ever see him praying to Jesus or, or talking about Jesus, but he very, very much is connected to the Virgin Mary. and. I've witnessed through the years that we've been together how much she is there for him. And he is very loyal on when you're supposed to light candles for her, what color and, and just the flowers you have to buy for her certain days. And he knows exactly what he's supposed to do with her all year long and he doesn't fail. And he never forgets to light her candles or burn them out. And he always prays in front of her. Always, no matter what time, if it's like 3 o'clock in the morning before we go to bed, before he goes to bed, he prays in front of her and blows out her candles. So, his faith is very strong when it comes to her. I have such a huge respect for him with that because he doesn't have to have a church. He doesn't have judgment. He just has his deity and who he works with. And I think it's amazing because he's very faithful. Faith, very faithful and he's a very kind man. A couple years ago, his grandmother passed away. Oh my God. If you are married, and or if you're just with someone, and you know when they lose someone very close to them, because his grandmother was like his mother. He has a mother, but his grandmother was more like his mother. And if you know what it's like, there's no consoling someone when they lose a parent. It's like, what do you do? It's like when I lost my dad, all he could do was hold me while I cried. You know, there's no words. Um, <laughs> I remember the night that I came home, I flew back home and I was numb and I, I was just being strong all day because I got back in the morning and I was just being strong all day for my kids. Like I wasn't going to show any kind of emotions and then that night after the kids got them in bed and I went to bed, I just curled up in his arms and just cried and all he did was hold me and that's all you can do and that's all I can do for him. So when his grandma passed away, he spent an entire day in the room crying. And I wish I could have stayed in there all day with him, but we, you know, we have three kids, so I couldn't stay in there constantly with him. I think someone's pulling up, guys. I might have to stop for a minute. No, they went straight. So I stayed in there with him as long as I could, but, you know, we have kids. Life does go on, unfortunately. And, you know, when we're going through that, we don't understand how life is going on. How are people still living when this horrible thing just happened? But, um, back to the point. <laughs> so I couldn't stay in there with him all day because I, I have kids to take care of. And I remember one of the times that I went to go check on him, he looked like he was being held. And I just kind of looked at him, you know, and I'm like, are you okay? Do you need anything? And he's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, okay, so he's holding himself. And I went in there and then just kind of hugged him for a few minutes. And then, of course, the kids started up, so I had to go back out because I didn't want them to come in there bothering him. So this is grieving time. He needs his time alone. So I left, and um, I remember looking back thinking, it doesn't feel like it's just me and him here, you know? Okay, so walked out, left him in there, fed my kids, went back to go check on him. And, again, he looked like he was being held. And I'm like... <laughs> It doesn't look like he's holding himself, but he has to be holding himself. And then that's whenever I seen her. And I didn't see her in like the form that you see the Virgin Mary statues look like. You know, that I just saw a very soft feminine presence. And it was white and wavy, like the wind was blowing. And it it was like how can I describe it? I don't even know how to describe it, but it was like clear like you could see through it but it was white and like the wind was blowing 
and the shape of it was kind of like the shape of the statues but there was no real I knew it was feminine and I knew it was soft and it was beautiful but I couldn't um, there was no actual substance to it I guess is, is what I'm saying it's really hard to describe unless you've, you've witnessed yourself standing there and like I said it looked like the wind was blowing but nothing in the room was moving and like she looked at me like I can't tell you how I know she looked at me because there was no actual face and stuff but she turned and looked at me and I felt her smile and I knew she was comforting my husband his deity was in there with him comforting him you know his mother was comforting him he was being taken care of and I think that was a moment that I really realized how real she was. I always have respect for advice beliefs. I always had a respect for people's beliefs, always. And I was never disrespectful. You know, I'm the one that bought him his statue and, and made him a spot for praying. And I always think that you, you, when you have a faith or a belief, that you should embrace it. And, but seeing it that way, like I know that my husband is so protective. Yeah, I asked my deity to protect him and my family. and and I use my magics to protect us but seeing it that day knowing he doesn't have the same beliefs as me made me feel so comforted because I also know by being his wife and my children are also being overseen by this other deity that may not be a part of my faith but is very much real and it just it made me feel good that she was comforting him and to know how I guess confirmation how real she is. I don't know why I would need it because I never asked for it. So I guess I didn't need it until it was there and I was like, that's great. And she was, like I said, he was there all day and that was later in the evening after I fed the kids. And, you know, she smiled at me. I knew he was fine. So I walked back out and I shut the door and I put my hands on the door, like giving my thanks. I'm just like, you know, putting that energy into the door like, thank you, thank you. Because I had no idea how to console him no idea how to do it so later on that night he came out and he was good I mean he still even cries to this day for the loss okay sorry about that I am at work and I had to um, help somebody but um, what I was saying is even to this day he still will you know tear up just like I do for my dad for his grandmother and we talk about her and stuff but when he came out that day, you can tell that he was healed enough to function. And I'm so grateful to his deity for helping him with that. And that's a story I, I've debated on sharing because I know a lot of people have their own opinions. But I respect everybody's beliefs and I know they are very much real. Just like I can't say someone's deity isn't real if I expect them to believe in mine. I can't expect someone to believe in my faith and my beliefs if I don't um, consider what they feel and they believe in to be real too. And to witness that my own self and to feel that my own self, I was very grateful. And I believe that she showed herself to me because she knew of the respect that I had for my husband and his faith. And even though it's not mine, and I'll never pray and bow down to her because it's not my faith. It's not anything that I'll ever do, but I'll always have a respect for her and for what she did for my husband that day. So I just wanted to share that story and see if you have any stories because I know that there's a lot of um, coexisting going on within households, within our community, where not everybody's of the same faith. And even though the pagan community has gotten so much bigger than it used to be, we're still not the majority. So I know that there's a lot of um, households that the um, combination of faiths. And I just wanted to share mine to see if anybody else has any that they want to share. So if you do have anything you want to share or you make a video, I would love to see it. Remember, in the comments, we're all entitled to our own opinions, but we got to be respectful of each other. And in order to be a part of this channel, and you don't want me to block you and delete your comments, be respectful. Because there's, <laughs> I've watched in the last couple of weeks the um, communications going on in the comments, and it's amazing, and it's been positive. Even people who don't feel the same about something or they're sharing what they do instead, it's, it's been positive and that is what a community is about because if we were all the same, how boring would that be, right? 
So if you have anything you want to share, please do so in the comments below. And if you have a video on this, if you've already made a video on this, please send me the link so I can come and watch it. I'd love to see it. All right, guys, I will see you at the next video. And as always, blessed be. Bye.